enero. doesn't want to retire rich and before retirement all of us have many dreams dreams of perhaps buying a house buying a car pursuing a higher education turning entrepreneur or funding our children's education but each of these dreams has a price did you know that intelligent financial planning and goal based investing can make it a lot easier for you to achieve your life's goals well that's what we are here for Hello and welcome to season 5 of NSC Finviz powered by CNBC TV18. I'm your host Mridu Bhandari and we are here to give you valuable insights that can help you manage and grow your money better. Today our set of financial experts is going to engage with the employees of Tiger Logistics from New Delhi, an innovative company that's offering supply chain solutions to various clients from around the world. Founded in the year 2000, Tiger Logistics is a company that provides innovative supply chain solutions. With its years of experience in the logistics industry, Tiger Logistics is known to bring you the most reliable, durable and highly efficient solutions to empower your business. With the use of latest technology, industry expertise and innovation, the company's aim is to become the most preferred choice for their clients spread across the globe. NSC Finways with its theme Dream On engaged with employees of Tiger Logistics in New Delhi to understand their thoughts on financial planning and to help them plan their goals better. We realize the importance that if our employees are, you know, well uh, aware of what's happening in the financial markets, they'll be able to give the best productivity. It is very important for them to understand the importance of making profits making money there are so many choices that people can choose in terms of financial planning and i think this initiative will help them clear their doubts and look at what is the best available to them at that age hello and welcome to nsc finviz powered by cnbc tv 18 and today we are here joined by the employees of tiger logistics from new delhi and our set of financial experts is all set to engage with them and guide them to better financial health let's welcome the experts of the day Tanvir Alam founder of Fincart and Ankur Kapoor founder of Plutus Capital. So our core topic of discussion today is tax saving instruments. Tanvir so uh, let's open this session by first answering the query many of us do invest just to save tax there's a maximum limit of 150000 a year um, so we do that is that a right, right mindset to have So basically what uh, one should do is add an objective or direction towards that investment and what you do is basically when you start before investing think of what are your milestones or goals that you have if you are married then you could have children education or it could be your retirement or it could be buying a house a car whatever you want to buy add a direction to that investment and then pick a product which best suits and will help you to achieve that objective that ensures two thing one you will be more confident about saving uh, in terms of growing your money for the desired objective and two is you will may have less accident while investing if if you choose the right set of product right so ankur can you list out the various types of instruments available uh, in the market for saving tax well the first thing which uh, normally most of the people would see is a provident fund deduction in their salaries so you need to consider that as the first thing uh see you know what you are investing in that at times we are investing more than 1.5 lakhs just in provident fund contribution then you need not reinvest let's say in the form of ppf and so on mm. very similar product to a provident fund is public provident fund these are both government uh, instruments uh i'll not talk about other instruments say post office schemes uh fixed deposit right. or nse uh the reason for that is those are not very tax efficient mm -hmm. so pf and ppf they are tax efficient they become tax free uh you know at the time you get that money 
so these are two instruments you should definitely look into. Mm. Uh, other than this, uh, and more important, I would say, if there is anything left, uh, let's say after PF, don't duplicate with PPF. You should rather look into equity exposed schemes, say ELSS kind of thing, right? which is a mutual fund uh, equity link saving scheme. And oftentimes you will see that you know ELSS uh, performs better amongst most of the mutual fund schemes because the fund manager is not under pressure of delivering you know after every three months six months right. they have a long horizon so they can take better calls because it has a lock-in of three years okay so let me get in some questions from the employees of uh, tiger logistics here um, madhu sudan chunjunwala is agm accounts and finance he asks Apart from tax saving bonds, LIC, NSC, which are the other instruments where tax can be saved as well as funds can be accumulated? So as I pointed out, ELSS is um, another way you can grow your wealth. In fact, ULIPS, as Tanvir also pointed out, you should avoid those schemes. Uh, one of the reasons for that is the transparency is an issue. You don't get to see what's going on within that. ELSS, you can watch your fund every day. You shouldn't be, but you can look into your the value of the fund every day. So that's one instrument. And uh, you know, beyond that, you always have a bouquet of uh, all the mutual funds available. Though, but those may not provide you tax benefit. So you should definitely evaluate other means of investing. And that other means could be, uh, you know, combination. Well, it's not a bad idea to even invest in PPF. PPF, you can invest 1.5 lakhs and although you get a very secure kind of return of 8%, which will hardly beat the inflation, but since it is after tax, so it's not a bad idea to accumulate money just in PPF right. other than the ELSS. There is no limit on the ELSS, but PPF, there is a per person limit of 1.5 lakhs. So these are the instruments getting into LIC products or getting into other endowment plans of other private companies and all is not a good idea. Always and always have a term plan. All right. So the next question is from KBS Krishna, business manager at Tiger Logistics. And the question is, the government is contemplating to abolish tax saving schemes and introduce a flat tax structure on the basis of the annual income. How do you foresee this uh, to affect tax saving instruments that one has already invested in? Directionally, I'm going to give you some pointers how the government is thinking. If you look at the government in the earlier budgets also have increased two things. One, they've introduced NPA system. Okay? Because India as a country does not have any social security system. Okay? And lifespan of people is increasing day by day. People are living longer. Now imagine a scenario where you have to live, say, 100 years. And given the demographic that is coming from below, you are, don't expect that you will be allowed to work later than 60 years. Okay, so you will have to fund your for 30, 40 years of your post-retired life with your savings. So you better start planning one. Second thing the government is doing is is increase the ATD tax limit on medical insurance from 15,000 to over 25,000. Hmm. It again the government does not will not provide for your medical treatment in your later part of the years. So it's giving you all limit to plan for have a good health insurance in place and give you a tax rebate around that. On that note, we are going to take a very quick break. But on the other side, the conversation continues and our set of financial experts will teach us all about goal-based investing. You are watching NSC Finviz on CNBC TV 18. Welcome back to Season 5 of NSC Finviz, powered by CNBC TV 18. Today, we are engaging with the employees of Tiger Logistics from New Delhi. And in this segment, our set of financial experts is going to teach us all about goal-based investing. So first up, experts, please define the term goal-based investing. You know, in whichever form you are investing, first, there has to be an objective why you're investing. Oftentimes, we feel, uh, feel that the market is, you know, booming. We should invest into equity. Although we need funds in six months down the line or one year down the line, that's not right investment because the goal was not defined properly. The goal was to get money, liquid money, in the next six months or 12 months. Equity was definitely not the right medium to go for that. So defining a goal is an extremely important thing. But through the years, our goals keep changing, right? As we pass through different phases of life, our goals keep changing. Uh, what should be the incremental increase in investing in our goals? 
over time, you know, maybe on a yearly, yearly basis or five yearly basis, what should be the incremental increase in our investment? See, it is all based on your earning. What I've always said, keep a very simple formula. If you're earning 100 rupees, India's savings rate is at about 30%. Hmm. Your first target should be at out of 100 rupees that you're earning 30 rupees goes towards savings. Right. And if you can't, if your aspirational living is very high, living very high uh, lifestyle, worst is 25% savings. You set aside the saving first, earn minus saving and then spend. Don't do the otherwise. All right. Most of us tend to first spend and then, and then put save. away the, the remains in saving. Yeah. All right. So let me take some questions uh, of the employees uh, of Tiger Logistics. Vishal Saurav Gupta, compliance officer in the legal department asks, um, and these are the dreams and goals uh, of the employees. His short-term dream is to go for a world tour and long-term is to have a farmhouse at any hill station. Um, the amount he wants to accumulate, short-term about 5 lakhs, long-term 80 lakhs to a crore. On a monthly basis, if, for instance, he saves 50,000 rupees, is that a good enough uh, amount? If you're looking at short-term as two years and long-term as about 25 years. On a short-term basis, that 50,000 will help you get to that uh, number for sure, part of it going there. On a long-term basis, it depends upon what long-term. If you're looking at 20, 30 years down the line, yes, you might uh, get to that level. Because uh, historically also, if you start saving 10,000 rupees a month, okay, and if you had done last 20-year investment, in one year you would have said 1,20,000. Like in 20 years, it would have been 24 lakh investment. That 24 lakh today would have become approximately 3 crore rupees okay, over 20 year period. If you invested over 10 year period, that would have been only that 24 lakh would have become approximately 50 lakh rupees. So the thumb rule of growing your wealth is power of compounding. Uh, let's go across to the next question. Shiv Prakash, manager of finance uh, at Tiger Logistics asks, his dream is to provide better education for kids. The amount he wants to accumulate is 10 to 15 lakhs. If he saves... 15,000 rupees on a monthly basis for the next 5 to 10 years. Is that a good bet, Ankur? So just reflect on this goal, if this is sufficient or not. Mm. More often than not, uh, it may not be sufficient. Right. And secondly, if it is India, so there would be 10% inflation, education inflation on top of it. So that will inflate anyway. So even that uh, the 15,000 rupees per month may not be sufficient if you consider the inflation aspect and reflect on this goal. Okay. The next one is from Rohit Upadhyay, who's a legal officer at Tiger Logistics, and his dream is to study abroad for masters. The amount is 20 lakhs on a monthly basis. Again, if he saves 15,000 for the next five years, is it achievable? For international education, 20 lakh rupees, you need to reflect which university, which area you are sending your kid. If it is US, uh, 20 lakhs looks like a very less amount. Yeah. Uh, although international 5% is an average inflation that you can expect, uh, within that you need to do the assessment whether it's achievable or not. You need to uh, increase the amount as well as you need to reflect on 20 lakhs. It might not be a sufficient amount. All right. So on that note, we are going to head into another quick break. But on the other side, our set of financial experts will engage with the employees of Tiger Logistics and answer all the queries that they have. Stay tuned to NSC Finviz on CNBC TV 18. Welcome back to Season 5 of NSC Finviz, powered by CNBC TV 18. Today, we are engaging with the employees of Tiger Logistics from New Delhi. And in this segment, our set of financial experts will answer all the queries that they may have. So employees of Tiger Logistics, please raise your hands, whoever has a query, and just wait for the mic to get to you. Yes. I uh, just wanted to check with Ankur, as you mentioned about NPS. So as I've already invested in some uh, uh, lifetime pension scheme with certain private institutions, and we're not much aware about NPS. So comparing both, uh, which is uh, more preferable? That would I like to know. NPS is a government scheme, and it's uh, regulated by PFRDI. Uh, there are strict mandate in terms of what is the quality of investment they need to make. And there are also strict mandates in terms of what is the maximum charge you can have on, a, on managing that fund. Although there would be private players only providing you NPS, DSP, ICSA, and so on. 
but they are mandated by the regulator. So what really poses them is something, you know, under a certain expense ratio they need to operate, which is, I think, 15 basis points. Even if you invest directly into equity, probably it will cost you more. Yes, the gentleman there. Can we have the mic to him, please? I just want to check uh, if there is any scheme that at a management level, you know, we could implement uh, while we restructure the salaries so that all our team members, you know, automatically get into some kind of financial in, planning. In fact, uh, there are certain products which could be done is not only to reward the employees, but to create what is called an employee and employer product, which helps you to retain employee over a long term period also. So it incentivizes and it also helps you to retain good quality resource in your company over a period of time. We can structure that product. All right. Any other questions? Yes, please go. Ahead. There are so many type of so many types of uh, mutual funds are there in the market. Hmm. Uh, everyone used to say, uh, everyone used to say, mine is good, mine is good. Being a layman, I used to get confused. So, what exactly your opinion? Well, one way of looking at it is, is I often recommend this, and people do not have this understanding that. You know, domestic institutional investors and foreign institutional investors move the market wherever the market moves. Uh, so there will always be mutual funds that are good performing and there will be bad performing alongside. So one good way as a first time investor that you can do is invest into index funds. That is an average fund. So whatever Nifty, whatever Sensex is performing, the same return you can replicate uh, minus, say, 0.5% or something on that. Uh, but you will replicate what the market is returning. You don't have to really evaluate whether it's a good fund or a bad fund. You have to just look at the expense ratio. The lowest expense ratio uh, index fund should be your first idea of investing because that's known as passive investment. What you're talking about, mutual funds, becomes the active investing. So in active investing, you have to really look into other parameters. You know, expense ratio would be one, uh, sharp ratio, information ratio. You know, it gets more technical there. Okay, we'll allow one last question. EPF is better uh, than other any investment, okay? But uh, nowadays, uh, there are so many things. Cryptocurrency, uh, bitcoins, things are there. So <laughs> whether we should go for the bitcoins or gold? Well, anything that is driven by an underlying uh, is a suitable investment. Underlying means when you are investing into a company, right, equity, there is an underlying. People like you working for a company, producing something, delivering service, and there is a profitability all around, then there is a value creation by people. But something which does not have an underlying, say a Bitcoin, you don't know where it is heading yes. or where it is you know, going down for that yeah. matter. So always invest into something that has an underlying. So that negates the Bitcoin coming to gold. Gold is driven by demand and supply situation globally. Not just India, it's a global commodity. right? If there is an upbeat on the equity market, then gold will not perform good. It's a hedge against equity. So having little bit of gold for a certain objective, let's say 20 years, 15 years, 10 years down the uh, line, there is a marriage in the family and you need gold for that. Then we can use that. Yes, you should invest in that too, not physical gold, uh, paper gold, ETF would be better because it comes at a cheaper price. So then you should accumulate. But otherwise, there is no need. It's a demand and supply play. Thank you so much, gentlemen. And thank you, everyone, for being such a participative audience today. With that, it's a wrap of this episode of NSC Finviz on CNBC TV 18. Warren Buffett once said that risk comes from not knowing what you're doing. So get educated. And we at NSC Finviz will, of course, continue to offer insights that can help you manage and grow your money better. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye. The employees uh, who are uh, working on a low margin or a moderate margin, they benefited very much for this by this event because they came to know by having ELSS as well as on the traditional uh, investment, they came to know how to balance themselves and how to make the investment in the balance fund or the liquid fund or the uh, equity fund. Until now, I was not investing anywhere because I was not sure where to invest and how to invest. But this show has created an awareness about investment. So yeah, 
it was very helpful the, the event was quite interactive i learned a lot of things like how to plan yourself how to plan your portfolio how to plan your life for after 20 years how you can manage your your current funds to build up equities or better funds for future for maybe after 10 20 30 years maybe after retirement Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.